We've all heard the term engineering, the E in STEM, but how many of us actually know what an engineer does? Maybe if one of your parents or guardians is an engineer, you might have a better idea. But I, for one, as always, I'm a little sketchy on what an engineer does and wouldn't really be able to tell you the difference between a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer. But that's why we're here, isn't that right? So today I'm joined by Paul McCartan, Head of Electronic and Mechanical Engineering and some graduates as well, Dylan from Intel and Christopher from ESB. Lads, you're very welcome. Thank you. So Paul, I'll start with you. Can you start by explaining engineering in its widest form, you know, to the uninitiated? Yeah, so I suppose engineering is the process of uh, getting things done, really, uh, in a lot of ways. It's the, the different skills and disciplines that are needed to help an industry either create things, design them, manufacture them, service them, uh, and, and ultimately uh, produce uh, interesting and, and novel products as we have a, in an economy or as a society. So it's a, just for getting stuff done, really. Right. Uh, and I know the three different types of engineering you can study at DKIT, right? What are the differences between them? So, yes, we have civil, um, electronic and electrical engineering and then mechanical engineering. So uh, civil, uh, Christopher can talk a little bit more about being a graduate, but uh, civil really is the, the engineering involved in structures. Um, and uh, getting that built, getting um, mechanical uh, designs done within the structures and then the foundations and making sure that they're stable for a long period of time. Uh, mechanical engineering then is, a lot of it's focused around products um, and we would have a lot of local regional industries who make mechanical engineering uh, outputs and so far as combi lift and you have multi hog and, and these kind of combi, uh, cargo tech and Dundalk. So these make mainly kind of people think of metal uh, as being the output, but ultimately mechanical engineering, a lot of it's to do with heat as well. Okay. So heat is falls into the area, uh, an energy transfer. Uh, and then electrical and electronics really is, is as it sounds, but it, it's so broad as well because electronics are, are everywhere from our phones to our internet to uh, to the control of any process that you want. You can yeah. have an electronic component uh, and really the big industry that's happening in the next few years is going to be electrical. Right. So as we go into renewable energy future, the main source that we have of renewable energy is electricity. So that electricity then has to be got around safely and processed safely. So um, they, they really do kind of all interrelate in one way or another. Dylan, I'll come to you. What is electrical and electronic engineering? Electrical and electronic engineering, <coughs> excuse me, is a, uh, it's a fascinating subject. I always found it really interesting because it basically it's, it's basically just, it's, I always thought of electricity as like a, it's magic. You can yeah, never, you yeah. can never see it. As a young, as a young man, I always thought, uh, I always thought about fixing things and and thinking of how to improve certain systems. And the co the course I studied here, electrical electronic systems, really enabled me to to uh, to follow on from what I'd done as a child. I used to take apart my PlayStation and fix it. Uh, Did you? you were, yeah, well, yeah, never brave enough to play that. <laughs> my CDs used to get stuck in the CD drive. I take it out, clean it out put it back in and play my games again. So as well as the project system as well in DKT is just, it's amazing the way uh, it's a, it, the last year, my third year was primarily just projects. Yeah. And the system that they have, whereas you have, so when I was following on for my project, we had certain aspects that you would take into account at, as these carry on to the industry as well. Right. So you have your calculation of your, and your software you have your hardware and your printed circuit board design, and this is all, it's all relevant in today's industry, especially when I work at Intel. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I presume you were the guy in your house every time something was broken, you had to go and... Dylan, <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> a kettle, yeah. microwaves busted, things like that. Yeah, yeah. take it apart first. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, exactly. <laughs> and Christopher, uh, come to you, what disciplines did you study and, and where are you now? So I studied civil engineering here at DKIT uh, up to level seven and following on from uh, graduating DKIT, I moved on to complete my level eight in Dublin. And from graduating level eight in civil engineering, I uh, followed that on by starting out with a company based in Belgium specializing in offshore renewable energy, so offshore wind primarily. Uh, I worked in the, with that Belgian company for almost 10 years and then in, to, in 2020 I came back to Ireland to start working in the ESB in the same discipline and uh, in the same focus area of uh, offshore wind and offshore renewable energy and uh, I'm with ESB since. Amazing. Fantastic. 
Uh, Paul, if you were to describe a student that was to, to come and, and study, you know, consider even studying electronic and mechanical engineering, what characteristics would that student display? Yeah, till and yeah, taking stuff apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. It's about um, how things work. So you know those programs on TV, which is how things work or yeah. how things are made. Uh, and ultimately, it's that kind of uh, inquisitive nature. It could be in anything. People, um, some people are very abstract and can can go off into design ideas in their heads and things. A lot of people like working with their hands. Yeah. Uh, want to uh, continue that. And really, the level seven degree is the applied degree in, in DKIT. It's the, the nature of level seven uh, and the engineering in DKIT is, is quite unusual compared to university, for example. Um, like this year, I was teaching some of the first years and six weeks after coming into first year, you're on the, working on a lathe. You know, you're on a milling machine in the workshop. Right. It's very hands-on um, and it's a real, uh, it's not just chalk and talk sitting in the classroom listening to PowerPoints. And I think that's one of the big things so um, that DKIT can offer uh, and because of that market readiness for the graduate yeah, of course. into the industry based on the fact that they, they want to get their hands on things, they want to get in, involved, figure out how they want. A better way to learn. This is it, learning by doing. And as, as uh, Dylan says, the projects, uh, we try to link them to companies locally. So we'll be taking company ideas in where possible from uh, ideas that they have that they might need developing. So. Really, I think the idea of a level seven is is the applied nature, and as um, uh, Christopher says, you can continue on with that. Uh, so the options that engineering gives are many. Yeah, uh, you can go from level seven to level eight, uh, either in DKIT, uh, which is your four year honors degree, or as Christopher did, you might want to go somewhere else. You can go to another technical university, uh, they'll accept you in for an add on year, or you can go to um, one of the you know, CV or Trinity, now you might have to do two years there. Oh. But ultimately, you can chop and change and choose as the graduate develops, because coming in the first year, you might know really what you want to do. Yeah. So um, so that really is the process of someone growing into their job. And then after level seven, as Dylan has done, go in straight into Intel, it's amazing. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's hugely uh, an option for people as well. And they can always come back. Yeah. So lifelong learning is definitely an aspect. Too. Definitely, so, I like that. All the options. So Dylan is out working in Intel. One of the other, you know, career opportunities for for graduate engineers. Yeah. So as I say, a lot of it's regional right. here in the area, and I think one of the so we've got the existing, as you say, mechanical engineering. We've well, an AVD apparently are uh, going to start a new R and D center in the locality. Um, we've got uh, links, and as you say, a lot of the crossover that people are appreciating now is that people who might traditionally have been making a hydraulic driven system or a forklift or whatever it yeah. might be because of decarbonization they are having to move to electrically driven systems ah so there's now a big crossover between the mechanical engineer and, and the electric. they soon find out it's an electronic engineer yeah. or electrical engineer issue in order to make their drive system work so as engineering evolves as it has to respond to this climate and all this kind of decarbonization stuff the, the skill sets are becoming much more uh, merged, much more crossover between the two, because you can't have one without the other. Previously, you had an engine, you filled it with petrol, off you went. That was pretty much mechanical. Uh, but now, it's not as simple as that anymore with EVs and even uh, drones and all that kind of stuff. That's all a crossover between mechanical and control. And with the three different types that we you know offer here at DKIT, are Irish engineers for all different types recognized around the world? Is this a job you can travel with? Is... Yeah. 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 So engineering has a number of professional accreditation associations. So Engineers Ireland is our one, and that is the one that's internationally recognized. And then you can continue on um, your professional recognition through CPD or through your qualifications to get what's called chartered engineered status. Um, but there's a lot of levels, associate membership, membership on the way up. And that's really an external validation of our programs. We have that for a level seven, We're going through that for a level eight program uh, now. And that means that on your way to the, the job of being a chartered engineer, which is a, a recognized and for civil engineering, you need it uh, for insurance purposes, for example, to be able to sign off on buildings. Uh, that's, that's the external validation for our education. Right. So that's an important process. Um, depending on the disciplines, m more for some of those. Right. Christopher, last one. Dream job, or are you already in it? I know I'm close enough to it, I'd say. I I, I focus on offshore renewables towards the end of my uh, 
academic career and when I got the opportunity to to enter into that industry, I, I, I was very happy and then I'm very, very pleased that it's actually finally made its way back to Ireland and it starts to, it's starting to you can see the the increase in the in the reputation of offshore renewables for the future of Ireland to, to reach its renewable energy target. Isn't that brilliant? And Dylan same as you have any goals you'd like to achieve as an engineer? Um just to be the best I can I can be. Oh, push an push an push push the electronics uh, and electrical systems we have in Intel to the max. And I know we have we've just released new chips that are going to power AI systems and um, so yeah, I just want to make the world a better place. That's all engineering is all about. So 